Well, good morning, everybody. It's an absolute thrill to be able to uh, speak to you today at the beginning of our Wellbeing Festival. Uh, my name is John Wilkes. I have the privilege of being Chief Executive of the Institute of Health and Social Care Management. And this event today really was instigated by our Workforce Wellbeing Special Interest Group, who've worked tirelessly over the last couple of years now to really address workforce wellbeing as a core issue for managers and leaders across health and social care to involve themselves in and take seriously. Uh, over a year ago now, 14 months ago now, we published our first ever workforce wellbeing guide. That enabled us to engage with uh, members and, uh, and non-members right across health and social care who provided specific resources to enable workforce well-being uh, in their workplace. And we were able to assemble a whole raft, therefore, of resources and practical guides to help people to address the issue. Moving on from there, that Workforce Wellbeing Special Interest Group meets very, very regularly. And they've come up with some fantastic events, conferences, workshops, and roundtables, culminating really in today's Workforce Wellbeing Festival. Uh, and when I say today, you should all be aware that actually this has been going on since Monday. This is a festival. We've, we've had breakfast meeting power hours from eight till nine. We've had lunchtime power hours of a similar ilk. We've already had a quiz and we've already had a poetry evening as well. And later in the week, we've got, I know, cocktails and a bake-off, can you believe, as well as various other activities to really draw attention and highlight the fantastic work that many of you are already doing in regards well-being across your organisation. Today, it's really the, the sort of bringing together of all sorts of different themes. And I mean all sorts. We've got everything from relaxation te te techniques to the business of thanking and praising people. We're even going to be looking at uh, high performance leadership techniques and modesty prevents me from telling you who's going to be presenting that. And then we've got all sorts of other small discussions, focus groups and so on, really with the aim of helping you, if you're one of our members who's tuning in today, to learn more about means by which you can um, encourage well-being amongst your staff and management. Well, look, today is a festival. And whenever I've been to a festival, it's been a celebration of sorts. So please throw off the shackles. Don't be ashamed about asking questions, getting involved, engaging with our speakers, interacting with groups and so on. We are here to support and encourage your development in respect of well-being. And this festival intends to promote that to the hilt. So without further ado, let's move on because we've got two fantastic guests um, to begin with. I've got Paul Devlin and Nikki Pointer here. Paul is the change agent uh, for the Emergency Care Improvement and Support Team, otherwise known as ACIST. Paul is also uh, uh, Academy of Fabulous Stuff ambassador and has done some fantastic work in that regard throughout. And Nikki Pointer is clinical site manager at the Maidstone and Tunbridge Wells NHS Trust. And I cannot wait to hear Nikki's uh, guidance, advice and expertise and doubtless case studies in respect of the whole business of kindness and positivity, be your best self. What a great way to start our festival today. What a great way to start the conference. Without further ado, Paul and Nikki, I am going to hand straight over to you. Thank you very much. Brilliant, thank, thank you, John. And Nikki, bless you for making it onto the session. Uh, bearing in mind you're live, live on site there at Tunbridge Wells. Um, so I'm just gonna share my screen and we're gonna do a, a lovely uh, double act for you guys um, on our session this morning. Um, can everyone see that? John, have you got that? Brilliant, thank you. Well, thank you for the introduction, uh, John, and we'll take you straight on to some of our content and over to Nikki. 
Hi, good morning. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here and speaking to you all this morning. Yes, I am actually live on site, so I do apologise if my bleep goes off. Um, I do have a colleague who is uh, overseeing everything at the moment, so I'm able to come and speak to you. Um, so Paul and I ha were in discussions for a long time about things that we could do to uh, improve kindness and positivity in the workplace. So our call to action uh, was was the foundation was the was the kindness and positivity network so we founded it with the vision uh, to train key kindness and positivity con concepts with evidence-based theory and we wanted to have like-minded people come together share practical kindness experiences and learn from each other share good practice with the hope of having kindness and positivity coaches and that staff and members of uh, any organization could have access to a positivity coach. Move on for me, Paul, thank you. Okay, so our first slide is about kindness being a choice and it is our choice to be kind. And when you are kind, it's contagious. So this little study here, um, it, was, it was an act of kindness that someone had done. They'd gone into Starbucks, they were in the drive-through, they had decided to pay for the person behind's order. And then that had a knock on effect. So the person behind paid for the person behind. And then you ended up with quite a few cars being paid for. So this random act of kindness just barreled through the entire queue. So when we when we talk about random acts of kindness, it not only makes an impact on the recipient of that random act of kindness, but it has such a huge impact on you. It makes you both happier. But what it also does is it has an impact on those around you. So if you witness somebody doing a random act of kindness, being kind to somebody, helping someone with their bags, helping somebody pay for something or whatever that random act of kindness is, it affects everybody around that's witnessing it. And when we give these random acts of kindness, it releases endorphins and oxytocin. So it makes you, it literally makes you happier. So if you do witness an act of kindness, you are more likely to perform a random act of kindness yourself. So this is where we talk about hyperdiactic spread. So this is the, the spread of emotion from person to person. So your emotions, they spill out everywhere. So if you're happy and you're kind and you're doing things and you're being helpful, you will automatically have an effect on the rest of the people around you. So the spread of emotion from person to person, you have the potential to give up to 800 people an average of a 10% uplift in your happiness. So each person increases by 10% if you're happy. It's a ripple effect. If you think of like a pond or a lake and you put your finger in and it ripples out, that's exactly what happens with hyperdiactic spread. Now, John Bradford's three degrees of influence See, if you are happy, the first degree is your close friends will be 15% happier. Second degree, your friends of friends will be 10% happier. And third degree, your friends of friends of friends will be 6% happier. So if you're happy, you're influencing all these people. So this is behavior breeds behavior. And this is something that I'm really, really passionate about. So when you're in a kind, happy mood or in a, in a helpful mood, you make other people helpful because you rub off on them. This is this emotional spread. So it builds positivity and self-confidence. So if I'm helping out a, a person or a colleague and they take it and then they help somebody else, it's a ripple effect. It's the, it's the finger in the pond. It's the rock in the, in the lake. It creates that ripple. It motivates, it inspires people into action and it leads to such achievement and success. But we have to remember the reverse is true. If you are in a bad mood, if you are having a bad day, and don't get me wrong, we all have them, you influence those around you. So if you're in a negative headspace and you're being particularly unfriendly, or if you're shouting at somebody, or if you've stumped your feet or slammed your hand down, your behavior is going to affect the next person. And then they're gonna affect the next person. So no matter what we do, behavior breeds behavior. Next slide, people. 
So these slides are all very similar. So this is spontaneous trait transference, the way that we describe others as the way that people see you. So if you, if you are talking to somebody about somebody else and you're saying, you know what, she's great. She's a really good nurse. She's caring. She's kind. She does everything for her patients or, you know, that person in this organization, gosh, she really gets that job done. You know, if you ask her, she will do it. She'll move mountains for you or, or he will go out and he will explain things to you. And they will go off and they'll be like, that person's really kind. That person is really kind. Again, the reverse is true. So if you're talking to somebody and you're saying, oh my God, have you seen her? God, oh, she's seen him. What a nightmare, terrible, awful. What's that saying about you? If you remember what your mother's or your father's or your care, you know, whoever was caring for you said when you were younger, if you've got nothing to say, don't say anything at all. It's one of the big things that my parents instilled in me. If you can't, if literally if you cannot say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Because we want to be thought of as kind. And I think that is the key here. Kindness breeds behaviour. Behaviour breeds behaviour. I'm going to let Paul go through the next slides. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Nikki. And um, gosh, what? It's a bit of stuff to think about, about there, folks. So being aware of your impact is the key heading we put under all that stuff. And we believe um, in the Kindness and Positivity Network that the stuff we're sharing with you today should be shared on induction for everybody joining um, the health and care organisations that we, we serve. Um, so uh, building on um, the stuff that Nikki shared with us around the science of kindness and positivity, um, this, this, this idea we're gonna share with you now is gonna have you reaching for the paracetamol. It's really gonna mess your head up a bit. But here's the thing, our thoughts aren't real. They're just thoughts, aren't they? It's just what we think. Um, and we'll have a little look at why, what causes us to think in the way we do in a second. But here's the thing that can really get you into a bit of a reflective mode. Even though our thoughts aren't real, we experience our reality through what we think and how we think. So it's a bit of a self-connecting loop, really. So thoughts aren't real, but our reality in terms of what we perceive to be our reality comes to us through how we think and feel. And we feel our thoughts. That's where our feelings come from, it's what we think. Now, knowing that your, your feelings come from the inside, they come from your conscious mind, gives you a really powerful opportunity. And that opportunity is that you have the option, if you know how this, how this works, to reframe your thinking, to feel differently. And when you feel differently, you'll take different actions and get different outcomes. And this is built on the science of human excellence called Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP. So people that flourish as individuals, personally, professionally, understand this. And they understand that they can control pretty much 90% of their outcome and destiny by choosing what to focus on and choosing how to think or what to think. And this is the model of neuro-linguistic programming. And you may have uh, heard uh, phrases like, um, um, you get more of what you focus on or thoughts become things. And that's basically how it happens. But how do we get to a point that we focus on what we focus on? Well, the reality is, there's a bit of a debate over the exact number, but the, the, the psychologists are telling us that there's around about two million bits of information hit our five centers a second. So just think on that for a minute. Two million bits of information hit your five centers. But our brains mechanically can only cope with 5,000 bits of information a second. And it goes through a filtering process to go from two million a second to 5,000 a second so we can manage those smaller chunks of information. So how does it know what to filter out, I hear you cry? Well, basically, it uses a little simple concept that's really dangerous. And the concept it uses to get you from 2 million to 5,000 bits of information in your visual control, in your visual awareness, 
is it looks to what you think about most and it gives you more of it. Now, the problem with that is it might sound pretty clever in terms of how it does that. And it's, the scientists call it a reticular activating system. It's your RAS. We've all got it and we, it all works. It's not under direct control. It's an automatic nervous system uh, process and it just happens on its own based on what we think uh, most about. Because our brains think that's what's most important to us. So it serves up more of it. But what it can't work out for us, and this is the problem, it doesn't know whether or not what we think about serves us or not. So if we're stressed, worried, concerned, upset, depressed, and we spend most of our thinking time in that space, we're just going to get a whole heap more of it. And this is the science around what pulls people down. But as Nikki is brilliant at saying, the reverse is true. So if you focus, surround yourself with kind, positive people that inspire you and value you and help you support you uh, to, to reach your true potential, and they're kind and positive. If you spend most of your thinking space in that area of life, then you're going to get more of it served up through your reticular activating system, this beautiful RAS filter. So we teach people a lot around and we talk to them when we do the coaching around be aware of what you're focusing on because your brain's going to give you more of it. Um, and it's very, very powerful filtering tool um, to take you from two million to five, uh, 5,000 a second. And that's the concept called we create our own reality and why we all see things in a different way. Now, what we've learned is that a kind of positive culture leads to a happy team. And people might say, well, that's quite nice, isn't it? But that's not very operationally realistic in this hard world that we work in. Uh, no, actually, what we've learned and what we're sharing with the country through our network is that being kind and positive is without doubt the most important characteristic trait of any leader. Without question because of the power of what comes next. Because if, our, if we are kind and positive and we have a happy team, look at some of the research stats on this. One-tenth of the sick, short-term sick leave that our service colleagues take, one-tenth, that's, that's billions of pounds worth of health and care money saved a year just by having a kind, positive and happy workforce. Twice as productive, twice as resilient, twice as likely to be promoted, stay twice as long in their organisations. And we know from our management research, don't we? It costs one and a half times a person's annual salary to replace them. And that's in the recruiting and the onboarding and the equipping. That's not to pay the new person's salary. That's a replacement cost. That's a direct replacement cost. And there's a lot of evidence supporting that fact. So again, that's billions of pounds worth of um, uh, savings there if we can have people stay with us twice as long as they do uh, um, on average and by the way December was the uh, highest month on record for people leaving the NHS without a job to go to and if you listen to some of the Jeremy Vine on BBC Radio 2 um, workshops where he has his workforce people in they will tell you if the NHS recruited every single school leaver for five years it still couldn't fill its vacancy rate so that's where we are. And that's why the case for kindness and positivity is such a critical thing for us. And of course, these people, as well as staying, they're six times more energized um, and you know, likely to positively contribute to your organization. Um, attitude of gratitude. Um, me and Nikki hold um, a few concepts close to our heart, really, and this is one of them. A day should never, ever be something to be endured and sadly we bump into people who are in that position and they probably feel stuck um, but we deserve more than that and we help people realize that a day should never be something that should be endured it should always be an, an exciting opportunity to make a positive impact in the world and that's what we love so much about fab academy and the institute and because that's where uh, that's the, the mindset of you good people, and that's why we love working with you. Um, and the sad thing is, the reason why we really kind of love this is because, after all, not everybody gets to have it today. 
Nikki, is this back to you yet, or is it still me? Still me, okay. Um, so guys, when we're talking to our um, teams around uh, the concept of positivity, um, and Nikki does this brilliantly, but she cautions around the uh, issue of what we call toxic posit positivity. Um, and this is basically where you've got your happy, clappy uh, maniacs that are, you know, just overwhelmed with it and nothing, nobody ever has a bad day and there's never a problem you can't solve. Well, we just think that's just a load of rubbish, basically. Um, you know, we're all human. We all have bad days and bad weeks and bad months, but hopefully never a bad life. Um, but building on what Nikki mentioned, what we believe is... Um, we don't subscribe to the fact that positive, positive thinking helps you do, um, will let you do anything. That's just unrealistic, that's madness. But what positive thinking will do, it will allow you um, to be more set to do everything better than negative thinking will. If you go into a negative mindset, neuro neurologically, subconsciously, your brain will shut down any uh, opportunities of positive outcomes it, it restricts your vision it restricts your options of choice for moving forward so a positive mindset actually has the reverse uh, situation and it opens you up to a world of possibilities it gives you a sense of agency that you can actually do something different It's just, that's you now, isn't it? This is, this is my favourite one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this is my favourite thing. So um, you are the average of the five people you spend the most of your time with. So if most of those people are what we like to call mood hoovers, so these are the people that generally suck the joy out of everything. So they are negative Nellies. They have nothing uh, positive to say. Everything's always a catastrophe. Nothing ever works out. They spend most of their time being miserable. Um, so if you are spending most of your time with these people that are literally hoovering up all the positivity, then you will take that on board. So if you surround yourself, like Paul said earlier, with positive people, with people that are proactive, um, you that will rub off. You will become a more proactive, happier, more positive and engaged person. So the next, the next slide, I'm just going to, tell you where this came from so when I I worked many 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 years ago before I came into healthcare um, I worked in an office and I was really miserable I hated my job didn't like it wasn't it wasn't me at all and I was moaning and the really wonderful woman that sitting next to me just turned around to me and went Nikki you are not a tree you can move <laughs> and floored me for about five minutes I was speechless and I just sort of looked at her and I thought, you're right, I'm not a tree, I can move. And that's when I decided to then go into nursing. Um, so in any given situation, 10% of what happens and 90% is how we react. So it's actually 10% is only, you know, that little bit where we're being told this is the problem and how we react to it is the, is the majority of it. So as this little meme says here, the problem is not the problem. The problem is your attitude about the problem. So my attitude at that time was being miserable. You know, was, I was negative. I wasn't doing a great job because I was miserable. And then I realized from, from this woman telling me that I was not a tree. So I moved. <laughs> and that's how I came into nursing, which I think is, is, is quite amusing in itself. But we have to remember, we are not trees. We can move. So we need to remember to be kind to ourselves. So it's all well and good giving out all of this kindness and positivity and you know, sharing, sharing ourselves with everybody. But actually, if we don't look after ourselves, then it's not gonna work. So kindness starts with you. You need to make a conscious decision to be kind. So the moment you wake up, if you've woken up on the wrong side of the bed, granted this has happened to me more than once, get up, make a decision. Are you going to be miserable for the rest of the day or are you just going to get on with it? Are you going to become positive and actually start your day with a better mindset than being miserable? Do an and random act of kindness. As I say, it gives you oxytocin and endorphins. It makes you happy. It makes the recipient happy. Do at least one thing that moves you forward with your goals. 
set set a target, set a goal, set an action. Have a dream, dream big, dream big, set a goal, take the action. Some people prefer to reflect, make journals, write things down, things they're grateful for, for that day. It could be that you're just grateful that you woke up this morning. You're grateful for your tea, you're grateful for your coffee. And then do at least one act of kindness for yourself, whether that be book an annual leave day, go to the beach, sit, watch the waves lap, go and buy yourself a cup of coffee, sit, reflect. We have to be kind to ourselves. We have to top ourselves up in order to be our best self and to bring our whole self to the situation. Because if you're only bringing half of yourself, then you're not really doing any good. You need to take that time and bring your whole self back. So the last slide is a quote. But people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you make them feel. And I think this is such an impact. This is such a feel quote. Because when you're talking to somebody, if you're breaking bad news, for example, and you make that person feel safe in their most vulnerable time of crisis, they will remember that. They won't remember anything you said, but they will remember that you made them feel safe, that you made them feel okay. And I think that's something that we all need to take. Actually, how we behave and how we come across and how we make people feel. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, John, Jade and Nikki. You're amazing. Thank you. Well, great start, Paul and Nikki. Thanks a million. Uh, goodness me. Uh, if that hasn't woken you up this morning, I'm not absolutely certain that you are capable of being woken up. Somebody once said to me, if somebody asks, how are you? Be positive in your reply. 90% of people don't want to hear your problems and the other 10% are glad that you've got them. Um, which I think is a rather nice kind of way of summing up what you've just said. Um, and I, I think the, the, the tricky thing is we, we need to acknowledge that, that there are people who are struggling on a given day. Um, and I think it's the, it's, the, it's the role of all the rest of us to try our best to pick them up, make them see an alternative view and help them to move forward with a degree of happiness. So I think it, it, I, I wouldn't want anybody watching this to be thinking that this is this is really about ignoring people who are struggling on a given day. This is actually about empowering you as a leader to pick them up and help them move forward with their life and their career and their day. So uh, I, I'm sure you would echo that, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. And it's something we talk about and uh, we'll be putting out as part of our kindness and positivity coaching program, which will let you more about, know more about going forward, John. But now, absolutely. Um, every, um, every opportunity to help people um, just be okay and cope um, is, is mission critical to us really and we want to get them to uh, flourishing don't we really in terms of uh, just struggling and surviving. Well I must say uh, Nikki there's a lot of um, praise going on in the chat in respect of your you're not a tree you can move I think that's just the most delightful phrase I've heard for some time I've made a little note of that as well, and I know Adam has as well, and numerous others, no doubt, are writing that down. And I've just bought Jessica Price Jones's book on Amazon. Sorry to the local bookshop on the high street where I live, where I make every effort to do my stuff, but I know they have not got that. So um, there we are. All right, look, shall we move forward? Has anybody got any questions? They might. We've got kind of four minutes before the schedule starts, so we can take one question from anybody who'd like to ask a quick one to Paul or Nikki. John, could I just give a quick shout out to um, our, our campaign page on the FAB uh, website. We're, we're at nhskindness.uk. Um, so if colleagues um, want to just uh, make a little note of that, it's all one word, nhskindness.uk, and it takes you to our um, kindness and positivity campaign page on the FAB website, that'd be brilliant. And you, we, we've got our contact details on there as well, if anybody wants to hear more about what we do or get involved with the uh, network. That's fantastic. Thank you, Paul. That was probably better than any question, to be quite honest. 
And uh, yeah, the Academy of Fabulous Stuff to which Paul is referring, uh, you can find that at fabnhsstuff.net online. Um, you, you're very welcome to go there and have a look at that. As I say, fabnhsstuff.net, that will take you to that. Uh, and indeed, the Academy of Fabulous Stuff, it is the best practice repository for health and social care. It's free to access. It's free to post stuff up there. And also it's a community interest company, not for profit, and is the ultimate owner of the Institute of Health and Social Care Management. So there you go. If you weren't aware of it, now you are. OK, look, it's time to go big, really big, because now we're moving to the different stages. We've got on stage one, if you would like to attend, we've got uh, John Lodge, Chief Executive of Hexitime, going to be talking to you about the Hexitime uh, uh, time bank for want of a better word it's a fabulous initiative and I would uh, heartily encourage you to have a look at that and he's going to be followed by Kellen Lee uh, who's a chartered psychologist and Kellen is going to be talking about belonging and belongings improving psychological flexibility and well-being for care home staff and residents through everyday objects stage two uh, we've got some working from home exercises if you're feeling sprightly Guy Brightman is going to be delivering that uh, and he's going to be followed by Helen Mason. I should say, you kind of, whenever you say the words Helen Mason, you have to preface it with the fabulous Helen Mason, occupational therapist uh, from the shed at Powdrum Castle. She's going to be talking about volunteering for well-being. If you want to be on stage three, that's the nurture stage. We have Dr. Reem Hassan, chief medical officer and GP for in health, talking about well-being at work, and she will be followed by Jasmine Leonce consultant, obstetrician and mentor, all about well-being in the workplace. Stage four, nourish stage. Uh, we've got Esther Murray talking about looking after ourselves and our colleagues, followed by the one, the only, Mr. Roy Lilly doing an eat well cooking demonstration. Stand by everybody and get your aprons on or you can go to stage five, time to talk. We've got Amanda Griffiths from Voyage Care talking about action for happiness. Uh, and uh, she will be followed by Simon Gilby talking about the next chapter, retirement. Really interesting topic. Uh, and we look forward to uh, many of you attending that. I think, Jade, I'm right in saying people can now choose in the if you look in the breakout room section at the bottom of your screens, you can choose a stage to now go into. And if you want to click on one of those, that will then sort you out. If you go down, you'll be able to see where you can go and you just click on join and it will take you there. So Jade, would you like me to ask people to do that right now? Yes, please. The breakout rooms are open and your presenters are waiting for you. Perfect. There we go. Good luck, everybody. If you get stuck, do contact Jade Maloney 